Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Fluent Hawk T1. This is a smart AI translator made by the same parent company as Time Kettle. We've seen some of their other smart AI translation buds in the past where you can wear one, give one to the second person, have a real-time conversation, which is really neat. Although these particular models did require you to connect to a companion app on a smartphone for you to get the full experience, meaning that they aren't really a dedicated translator by itself. And so they're trying to expand their catalog and now the T1 is kind of an all-in-one unit. You don't have to bring along your phone now, it does all the processing on the unit and it also has two years of free data service using a built-in eSIM boasting up to 95% accuracy, supports up to 40 languages, 13 which are offline, meaning that even if you're disconnected from the cellular or Wi-Fi, it can still function, which is pretty neat. Has a four inch display, technically running on a version of Android, powered by a quad core processor and three gigs of RAM. A dedicated unit like this claims to have better accuracy because of improved microphone pickup just for your voice, as well as faster recognition, again the offline translation modes. Behind the scenes is also using a series of translation engines to get you hopefully the best accuracy possible. If you are a frequent traveler to different countries and regions, then it might make sense. It also has a built-in camera, 8 megapixels, which can have photo recognition as well. Anyways, packaging here is quite simple, just reiterates some of the specs once again on the back. It still has Bluetooth built on in, by the way, so if you are using this, you can connect it to wireless headphones. Welcome card with a SIM card ejector tool. Uh, if you want to use your own SIM, for instance, for data in the future, there's a quick user guide. And then down below here, we have the T1 itself along with access to a USB Type-C charging cable, and you also do get a lanyard strap, so you can take this with you more easily when on the go. Powering the unit on usually takes just a minute or so, since it is running on Android, and otherwise uh, we'll get to a closer look at the software, but before then, touring the hardware design, it is relatively elegant. Again, having this 4-inch display here, which is IPS, feels quite compact. The frame is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, uh, but overall still feels sturdy enough. We have some of the arrays for the mic microphones and speakers, and on the side here just the power key along with two keys which you can use to talk into, and then the other person can press the other colored button in the other language. Now on the very bottom here there's just a Type-C port for charging, a lanyard strap, and then on the other edge we do have a volume rocker along with the SIM card ejector slot, and then additional microphones on the very top there, so this thing has a ton of those for pickup. The back here just features the camera for image recognition, there is also a built-in LED flash, and again, the entire material is continuing to be made out of this polycarbonate plastic, but looks actually quite elegant. Now, before we take a closer look at the software, one other quick size comparison with some other translators that we've seen in the past include the Travis Touch Go, which is another popular smart translator that came out about a year or two ago that also has built-in eSIM for translation if you're not connected to Wi-Fi. However, this thing has a considerably smaller display, as you can see there. So navigation is a little bit more clunky by contrast. It also lacks a built-in camera, so there is no image translation mode either. And we can also compare it with something like the Doodoo -doo Duck 1, which was another translator that came out earlier. This model also has a smaller display. It also lacks a built-in eSIM functionality, so it's more limited in terms of to Wi-Fi only or offline, but it does have a camera, although it is by a less reputable name in terms of the translation world, uh, versus again with Time Kettle, they have made multiple generations of translator products. I would say overall it is one of the more elegant translators that I've seen. So over here we have just a simple time and wallpaper. Down below here we can instantly check out languages that we want to translate. You can go through here to change and map what the blue and red keys here will correspond to. So by default we're choosing between English and Chinese. Other language variants including accents can be further customized just by tapping down below there. Accessing the photo translator, once again we have the ability to choose the language. I'm going to say Japanese here, I'm going to tap to translate, and then it's going to kind of process that image, and there we go. It says hello is the term that has been translated. I can scan again. Uh, other things that you can do include saving it into your gallery so that you can access the translation again in the future. Let's try this one more time using a longer text and see how it fares. 
And there we have it. It has the same text that you can reference. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this once again. You can also take a look at the original versus the translation. Again, zoom on in using multi-touch and you can take a closer look. So this is a poem. So right now, that's why it is a little bit more irregular in terms of the translation, since uh, one of the, of course, limitations with any AI translation engine at the moment is syntax really is optimize for common vernacular rather than, again, poetry. A lot of the intricacy and cultural meaning can be lost when you're just translating word by word. Uh, but regardless, here's another example. We do have a better, more well-formed sentence, and it is working quite well. Explanation, the song is a representation of repression and censorship, so on and so forth. And this particular historical text seems to be doing well. Some sentences are a little bit smaller than others, but at least the entire accuracy here does seem to be quite good, again, compared to other image or OCR recognition technology at the moment. We can also jump into the one-click translation mode, which as aforementioned, we have those two Spanish and English variants at the moment, so I can give it a shot here. I'm going to tap on English. Hello, this is a test of the English translation of this device. And Hola there we go. De la traducción al inglés de este dispositivo. So you can see that it is indeed very quick, just about a split second, and overall you see the word-by-word -word pick up while the entire thing is happening. There's also an LED light that you saw there flash when the microphone is recording, and the overall speaker also seems to be decent in terms of the volume output. You can further change that per your liking. You can slide down just like on any other Android device to connect to Bluetooth accessories including speakers and wireless buds if you want to have a more private conversation. Now I can also tap on here to trigger different modes such as offline translation. If you turn that on, again, it won't use any data services. You can also change the speaking interval or speed after which it will read back the announcement. If you turn that off, by the way, it will only display the translated result without necessarily reading it back. Now I can also scroll down, it says, to access the previous history of results, so you can hide that from view if desired, and you can even flip the orientation so that it will go like this. And you can also long hold for a few seconds to correct any misspellings, for instance, and it will then allow you to make a retranslation. Gracias. Pienso que este es muy interesante. Thanks. I think this is very interesting. And overall, again, working quite well. Even if your voice is slightly further away, the microphones are doing well. The color of the LED here also changed the blue to recognize that it's in the other language mode. One thing I will say, though, is it doesn't seem like there's the ability to export these translated results as a PDF or email it to yourself, like on some other models that we've seen in the past. So right now, you can only reference the history on the unit itself. So the translation accuracy and strength, I would say it's as good as the current technology will get, for the most part being quite fast, and having again multiple ways for it to connect either to cellular, Wi-Fi, or even offline modes are all functioning well. Uh, now if you are in the offline mode, I will say that the translation's results can sometimes be a little bit more robotic compared to the online mode, which is going through more of the AI and machine learning, versus the offline is slightly more dictionary-like in terms of translating word by word. But if you're just doing simple things like asking for directions, going to the market, Market, those things still don't have any problems in terms of being understood. It does have a 1,500 milliamp hour battery, which in my testing allows you to operate it for around six hours continuously, which is quite good. Now we can also slide over to the right to access some more functions, include a asking for directions and a chat translation mode, which are pretty neat. Excuse me, can you help me? We can use this translator to communicate. So that's the asking for directions mode, which is just giving you a few presets in terms of a larger word that someone else is able to see. And the beauty here is you're able to program different sentences ahead of time so that it will auto-translate and show when you press on that key. So for instance, if you're commonly going to say, you know, I'm lost, how do I get back to the hotel? Uh, you can program this in so you don't have to repeat yourself every single time. Chat translation. So this one here is allowing you to have a dialogue. The other person can see the translation more easily since the screen here will be mirrored. You can put it in front of you and continue to have that without having to press on the keys and start or stop. So it will continue to record in a more fluid way as you exchange the dialogue. So for instance, now here's a test of the 
auto translation conversation mode. Now listen mode here is going to be more one directional, I'd say. If you're just trying to have an interview or you're trying to listen to someone speak for longer, you can use this to transcribe their entire sentence here into text and you can listen to this back in the future. We also have a voice memo mode, which is not going to do any translation. It's just acting as a basic voice recorder. But this can still be neat if you are trying to, again, return to these memos in the future for you to reference. You can also jump into advanced settings, which allow you to take a look at how much data you have used, how much longer you can access the free eSIM for, as well as connect to other Wi-Fi networks, although there is no phone dialer pad to speak of for regular phone calls. Now you can also take a look at offline translations. So again, all these languages that have been downloaded, some of them that you can then press on to download, such as Korean to English. By default, it hasn't been fully installed just to save on memory, but you can tell that they take just about under 200 megabytes of space per language pack. You can also swipe over to the left to access a widget panel, which I do think is pretty cool. Uh, it shows a little bit more of attention to detail versus other smart translators, which is not giving you really anything extra. But on here, you can still tell two times because if you are a constant world traveler, you may have to convert between different time zones, which is neat. You can also take a look at basic currency conversion as well to tell how much uh, you have to pay when you are on the go. Common expressions can also be accessed here, which is really fun if you're trying to learn different languages, such as if I'm traveling here, you can quickly tap on different dialogues to read them back, excuse me, uh, the train is leaving soon, is there a fast track, things like that. And you can customize, again, these key phrases, translate them between different languages, getting to different destinations and attractions, and you can also read those back more quickly without necessarily having to type them in or speak them out loud. There's an SOS mode which will tell you the emergency contacts based on the region that you're in, but it doesn't actually send out an alert, which is also one thing that might be a little bit of a missed opportunity since it has a built-in speaker, microphone, and even SIM card. It can technically make calls, but there is no phone dialer that you have access to. But you can check out this information at a glance and then, of course, make that call from a separate device. Uh, we can also take a look again at the albums as well as translation records for easier reference between all the different types of translations that you've done and more easily kind of reference these back. But again, still no export functionality from here at the moment. But ultimately, as far as dedicated translators are concerned, this is definitely one of the sleekest. It's really compact, all-in-one models that we've seen yet that is definitely designed to work quite well and gets the job done. So you can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Fluent Talk T1.